privately owned prisons. Today, there, this year, there's been about 2 million people that are in prison right now. 17 years ago, there was only like 1.5 million. So that's quite a bit, big difference. But within those 17 years, three times as many people are in privately owned prisons. There's a company, it's named CoreCivic. And two years ago, it made $1.8 billion off of privately owned prisons. Um, it's not a very good company. Privately owned prisons buy up prisons from the government and they tell them and they make contracts with them saying that they will take the burden of all these people but as long as the government gives them enough people to fill these prisons to like somewhere between 90 to 100 percent capacity which that's a lot of people and that's kind of hard to fill sometimes but in these contracts if they don't reach this limitation then they owe them money, then the government has to give them money. In 2015, the Core Civic sued the Arizona state government for $10 million because they only had 70% capacity. Now, while they didn't get that full $10 million, they did get three. And that $3 million could have went to so many other things other than feeling, feeling this corporation. Pris and prisoners do not like this corporation. There has been 1,200 cases filed against them in the last five years. And 82% of those were prisoners that have, were prisoners that are trying to file cases against them. Now, sure, prisoners, being in prison can't be good. I mean, you're in a cell all day, you eat bad meals, you hear about it all the time. But these, these prisons are, they give people infractions, and infractions can cause you to stay in prison longer. And since these privately owned prisons are all about making money, they hire new people. They hire people that haven't been trained very well or haven't been a guard in prison for very long which means that there's going to be a lot of turnover here. I mean, and when you're a new person in a new job, you're trying to make yourself known, make yourself seen. So they're more likely to give infractions to prisoners than somebody who's been there for five or 10 years. And the more infractions somebody has, the longer they can stay. And the longer a person stays in a privately owned prison, the more money they make. So again, the more infractions, the more money they make, and they get infractions because they're hiring new people, having to pay them less. Money, 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 money is all these prisons really care about. And there's been a lot of evidence to show that these prisons should not be here. I mean, less than 100 years ago, it was all publicly owned prisons, and they were doing okay, of course, and it's costing our government money, and when this corporation decided to come up and buy prisons, they promised our government that it would be cheaper, they would take on the cost of these people, and the government would only just have to, you know, throw a little money their way. That's not how this worked out at all. The government's actually spending more money on these privately owned prisons than they are on publicly owned prisons, and they're making people stay longer. Um, if you end up in a privately owned prison, you will have to stay there on average 15% longer than if you're in a publicly owned prison, which means more money. Um, every year they make about $3,300 per prison, per person in prison, which is quite a lot. And their net profit from that is about $1,000 a person, which is quite a lot of money in my, in my opinion. I think that we should try to go back to publicly owned prisons and we should stop the abuse to these people and just let them serve their time and get out. Thank you.